everyone, it's Donnell McAdams and I'm going to show you how to use the Quick Easy Miter Binding Tool today. This is a tool that will allow you to make a miter in your faux binding, so to speak, because we are bringing the back, this is the back of my quilt backing, and I'm bringing that around to the front to form that binding. So what I'm going to be showing you today will create a 3 quarter inch wide. But you could do this and you could manipulate the numbers and the measurements and you could have it as a half inch or even wider. I've done some as wide as an inch and a half or two inches so that when it's turned it's about two inches wide. So what I've done here and I want to show you that everything is in the instructions with the tool in picture form. So I'm going to show you how I did that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to um, take my fabric and I have cut my batting up to the edge of my top layer. So whatever I have on my top layer, you can see over here, I have the same width as my backing or my batting is the same as my top border. Now, let's say you were doing this and you had maybe a flying goose pattern that comes down here and if you turn this over, it's going to lose the point. Then what you want to do, if you're going to use a three quarter inch turn, you're going to leave a half inch of your batting attached. So you'll have your border ending here and you'll have an additional half inch of batting. And then from there you would measure out your inch and a half so that when you turned it, you would not lose the point of that goose. So you can do that also. But for what I've done today, I've trimmed up to the next to the edge of my border. I've left this an inch and a half and then I've already pressed this in so that it's right up to the edge of my border. And then what we do is we're going to take the tool, let's see here, one that I haven't, I guess I've marked all of them. We'll just start at this corner. And so this is the tool. It lays on the corner like this so that it's lined up with the lines that are already etched on the tool. So you can see that I can get that lined right up and know that I came right back to my border there. And so what I'm going to do now is I am going to make sure my fabric is out flat. I'm going to draw a grit along the edge and then I come back in and I draw a little line right where that intersects with the fold. And so you're going to do that in all four corners. So I would come to the next corner. I would lay that down. I would draw that line and draw that intersection. And so then what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to fold this back and I'm going to lay this right back on itself. Now you can see this is my batting. It's not connected. My quilting is holding everything in place. And I am going to then use a straight pin. And that straight pin is going to go through that intersection point. And when I put that through there, if it's not right through the same, and it is here, but if it's not right through the intersection on this side, you're going to take the pin out and you're going to reposition it till you get it in that point. And then I'm simply just going to lay this like so, and I am going to stitch in that line. And I'm going to stitch from this point to that point, and I want to make sure everything is laying good and flat. So I'm going to flip that back just a little bit more there. And now I'm going to start in the middle. So I am going to start on the middle of the drawn line there. So I'm going to take my foot and set it down. I'm going to stitch forward. Oh, I've got to set my machine for a straight stitch here. There we go. And I'm going to stitch forward to the fold. And then I'm going to touch the reverse. And I'm going to stitch right back on that stitching until I come to that straight pin. And I don't like to stitch on a pen, so I want to make sure I stop right before the pen, release that reverse, and come back to the center there. And so I'm going to go ahead and cut that thread. I'm going to take that pen out. I'm going
going to raise my foot and I'm going to make sure I didn't go past that point and I didn't. And so now I'm going to just simply trim this so that there's a quarter of an inch left and then trim just right down to that point. And then all I need to do is turn this over to the right side and then with a point turner, I'm going to use my finger here today, but with a point turner, you're going to turn that back out. Now this little pair of scissors has a blunt end, so I'm just going to push that out so that that gives me a nice miter. And then I would simply lay this back and you can see that I've got that already folded and I would then be able to pin that or use my wonder clips and then all I need to do is stitch that down in place. So I'm going to switch the foot right here. I've got a few wonder clips I'll be able to use here so that you can see that. Obviously I would go ahead and do all four corners before I start stitching, but we will just go ahead and lay this in place and turn this up. And now I'm going to use the foot that allows me to get right up there. This is called a left edge top stitch foot. You may be using what is called your blind hem foot. And so I'm gonna sit that down onto my fabric I have a little red line on there that lines up, and now I'm going to select a narrow zigzag stitch, and it's going to be in the left position, and I'm going to adjust it. I guess I selected the wrong stitch. There we go. And I'm going to adjust that so it moves over, so it's just going to barely catch the edge. of my fabric. What size stitch do you use? I'm using a narrow zigzag and I really can't tell you a size because of the fact that it's going to be different on every machine. I wouldn't be able to tell you that because it's going to be different on every single machine. So I'll show you what mine looks like so that you can get the hang of it. But I have found that this little narrow zigzag is what works the best. And I'm just catching the edge when I get to the corner here. I'm going to leave it in the fabric, so I'm going to put my needle down. And I'm going to pivot my fabric. And I'll just take this one out and rotate this around so that you can see what it looks like. So that by just using that narrow zigzag, I'm catching right into the edge of the fabric and into my um, binding there. So that's how easy it is to use the Quick Easy Miter Binding Tool. I'm Donnell McAdams and I'd like to thank you for joining us. If you're interested in purchasing this, you can go to our website www.sobizmarion.com. Thank you.